a previous video featured an enemy agent with a known deterministic behavior. In such situations, the standard search methods we learned about previously work fine, because the enemy is simply part of the environment state. However, if an agent does not know how its opponents will behave, then a more appropriate method is needed. This video deals with adversarial search. Using the game of tic-tac-toe, also known as knots and crosses, as an example. Now in this game, players take turns placing their symbol in one of these nine spaces, either an X or an O. The goal is to get three of your symbol in a row, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Now if the players take turns like this, you'll see that O now has a chance of getting three in a row. An appropriate move for X would be to place here to block that, but if X were to make a mistake and play there, then O could play in this position, get three in a row, and win. Now how will we search in this state space to make proper decisions? We can do it with an adversarial game tree that looks something like this. Now, portions of this tree are missing because the full game tree for tic-tac-toe is too expansive to show in its complete detail. But, as you can see, we start from an empty board state, and because we assume that X goes first, all of these board states are the different moves that X can make. The upper left, the upper center, upper right, and so on, all the way to the lower right. Now, from each of these nine states, O, or the circle, can make a follow-up move in eight more states. Now, I've used ellipses to indicate that there are several missing states here, but you can see that there are many possibilities from here all the way down to there, from this state, and then from this state, X's position is still the upper center, but O can fill in any of these other spots all the way down to the lower right. And then each of these states would also have its own eight children in this tree all the way till the end. Now, I've expanded particular sections of this tree to make some interesting points and to show you how we can search this tree in order to make wise move choices. Now, if we start from here, and branch out, the next move belongs to X. And all of these empty positions are available. Therefore, I've depicted all of them in the spots shown below. And then I've expanded two of them. Now very quickly, you can see that if we branch out down this route, and I will go ahead and zoom in here so you can see this better, all of O's available moves from this state are now shown. Now we can already see that victory is near. Um, specifically, X is only one spot away from getting three in a row here. And if O makes any move other than to block that position, then X can immediately win. So these are all of the moves that O can make that do not block that position. And although I've not shown it, X can win one step beneath all of these states simply by playing in this upper left corner. So all of these states are victories for X. And we'll see later how this information is used as we work our way back up the tree. But let's go deeper for now. So if O goes there, then it is X's turn again and here are all the available moves for X. And one step down, it is O's turn again. And once again, I've only expanded select portions of the tree, which will, the reason for that will become clear as we work our way back up it in a minute. And one more level down. Here, I've expanded two branches as we near the end, um, partly because as we go deeper and deeper in this particular game, the number of options decreases. That's not true of all games, but it is true in this scenario. 
And then from this one position going down, it is O's move again. And then finally, X. Now, in practice, you would need to expand the game tree entirely and reach all of the end states to then use the method I'm going to show you now. So in this state, X wins. That's three in a row. Now, it was X's turn to make a move here. X didn't really have any option as to what move it would make, but it certainly likes this outcome. So that is a good state for X. It's a state where X wins. If I go back up one level to the position where O is making the moves, if I am player O, I would not like this state. X guaranteed wins in this state, so I would prefer not to make that move. In fact, O wants to make this move where it gets three in a row and wins. So this is a state where O wins. Now, regardless of which player our algorithm is controlling, the game tree would be made the same way. But if, say, we are controlling player X, we would model O's moves assuming that O is an optimal player. So X would love to make this move. And X knows that if O were at this point, O would love to make this move. Therefore, if we go back up one level to where it is X's turn, because X knows O will favor this move, X will not choose that move because it will lead to O winning. Even though there's a chance of X winning two layers down, X assumes that O will make the smart move instead and therefore avoids that state. X would also not make this move because O could play there and win as in this state. But X would make that move to win immediately. Therefore, because X is in control, this is a level where X wins. Similarly, at this level of the tree, X can play there and win immediately. So in both this set of states and this set of states, X can win. Back up one level, O is making the decision here. X was guaranteed to win here, so O will not go that way. X is guaranteed to win here, so O will not go that way either. Unfortunately for O, X can win easily in all of these states. Because if O goes to either of these states, X is still one move away from winning. So O doesn't like any of these states. That means that X wins at this level no matter what happens. Therefore, X loves this state. Doesn't even really need to look at the others, but we'll get into those details later. Um, therefore, X wins at this level of the tree. O does not like that state because it leads to X's victory. And as I demonstrated earlier, X is actually only one step away from winning in all of these other states. So O actually doesn't like any of these states. Which, once again, if we go up one level, means that X loves this state. X is guaranteed to win from there. Now, let's see what happens if instead of going down this path, we had gone down this other path here. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom and work our way up, just like before. So if we get all the way down this far, this is a draw. Now, that's not great, but at least it's not a loss. And if you get down this far, X really has no option but to make that move anyway. If you go up one layer, there are two options. 
one where there's a draw, and then this one where O wins. So since O is making the decision here, O would favor this move, not that one. So this is a state where O wins. Now similarly, at this level, O would win in that state, so O would favor that position. O would not want to go this route, which actually ends up in this same state, this draw state there. So O wins in both of those states, and because O is making the decision there, it wins automatically if X makes the mistake of going either of these directions. So X doesn't like either of these states, but actually O is only one step away from winning here. That would be down one level. So X doesn't like that state either. O wins at this level no matter what. Both go up again. Here O is making the decision. Since O wins in all of those states, O likes that position. Now, in each of these, if I go one move down, X could win there, there, or there. But since O is making the decision, it won't pick either of those moves. So O will win. And that means that X, going up again, does not like this state. It leads to a situation where O will win. However, if X doesn't play here, then O's next move down will, once again, be an immediate win. So O actually wins in all of these states. All of these states are bad for X. That means, going up, that O loves this state. If O makes this move in the center here, then O will win no matter what happens that lower down in the tree, assuming optimal play from both players. In contrast, one move down from each of these states where X makes a move, X could win. But since O is making the decision, it will avoid all of those states. So this is a level where O wins. And if we go back up, because O wins at this level no matter what, that means that X does not like this state. Now, it would take some work to fully expand the rest of this. Um, it's not fully necessary. We know that because X has a guaranteed path to victory here, it can win at this level. It would just make that move, and then everything beneath that guarantees X will win. If we go up one level from there, that means that O does not like this state. It would not go in that direction if it could avoid it. But to go any further, we'd have to fully examine all of these other states, which uh, we don't have room for here. But we can see that if the board were already in this state, so O had made the mistake of moving here, then of all of these moves, X could create this game tree and figure out that it should take this action. It should make the move that puts the game in this state. If we carry this reasoning all the way up to the top, which we could if we had fully expanded the game tree, then each of these states would be labeled as a guaranteed win, a guaranteed loss, or a guaranteed tie, or uncertain. And this early in the game, pretty much everything is still uncertain. If there are uncertainties, X would simply favor the path that led to the most opportunities for victory. And that is how an agent can make decisions in an adversarial world using a game tree.